So I've got a new machine. I sold my other two that you see on YouTube. I sold my Ford Ranger pickup, condensed them all down, and bought one machine for transportation. That would be the BMW R1200 GS. And I might add the factory lowered option with the uh, spoke wheels. Factory lowered was the key for a guy who, like me, is 5'6 with a 30 inch inseam. GS's and short guys are not compatible unless you've got the lowered suspension. And I might add a lowered seat. So uh, I really have to give most of the credit, 90% of the credit, for all the aftermarket upgrades on this bike to the previous owner whose name is Rusty. He's in Virginia. I bought it from him and had it shipped out here to Washington State. We used uh, escrow.com for our transaction of funds. I actually bought it from him on eBay with a buy it now price. That was pretty gutsy. And I had the bike shipped out. It cost me about 700 bucks to have it shipped out here from door to door. And so let's look at some of these upgrades that uh, might give you some ideas for your own bike. Uh, got the added beak, we've got the PL lights which work fantastic for lighting down the road, shooting way down the road to see. These driving lights, the yellow driving lights, they are bright. Let's see here, give you an idea. Yeah, I get a lot of comments on how bright they are. People can see you down the road. Uh, protection on your headlight, actually this bike has HID, aftermarket lighting and uh, protection here for the radiator. It has um, one of these Strubel horns, about 130 decibels. Unbelievably loud, but very effective for scaring away deer if you see them on the road. They do go the other way. Uh, speaking of deer, I have a deer alert. This is my deer alert. Scientifically, that seems to be one of the best products out there. So, dear alert, if you want to read about it on the internet. Uh, before I forget, uh, the suspension, which you see the upgraded suspension there and here uh, with Elka suspension product. That's for the front and for the rear, and they're adjustable even while you're driving. And you can add preload here. Uh, the fully rebuildable shocks, they really work, really work well. Couldn't be happier with those. All right, uh, the, the Wonderlich windscreen, which is fully adjustable. Going down the highway, you want, you want all the wind protection you can get. You want to go on the fire roads, you can just drop it down that much. Plus, you can also mount it and slide it in here, so you really have a variety of options for uh, wind protection. These are my little additions. They, I would, in, in uh, thinking about it, I probably would have used heavier material. I may still make, make these again at a heavier material, but they work just fine. The wind just kind of comes back like so. Helps kick the air to the side more. Keeps it away from my helmet as much. I don't have hardly any wind buffeting, but what really made the wind buffeting go away were these. This blocks the wind on my hands. I have no more issues with rain on my hands. And this little kick, part here kicks up and it keeps the wind from coming up my arm and hitting me in the, uh, the the helmet for some wind chatter this takes care of that it's really quite comfortable and I, I got to add this here as well I put that on there between the this edition this edition and this edition I feel like I'm on a gold wing touring bike and let's see and by the way these just these are just on your velcro they, they pop right off, so if it's hot out and I, I want the wind on my hands, I can, I can pop those off really easy. These little switches right here for the P lights and for the yellow driving lights. Okay, back to the front where I started. Uh, you can also adjust your, your angle of the windshield with uh, these adjustments. Pretty simple. Again, more wind protection. And I've got the rocks risers that really added a lot for the short arms on on my short little body Vertically challenged forever. It seems like all cars and motorcycles are made for taller people 
but there's ways of getting around it. And I've got a, a voltage meter here. This gives me an idea of uh, how much output I'm getting to the battery when I have all my heated gear and my lights running. This bike can handle it all. There's, there's no problem at all. But previous bikes I've had have had problems with uh, enough wattage output between your heated grips, your heated gear, your headlight on high, and if you had a passer, passenger with heated gear, forget it. You, you, something's got to be turned off. Not with this baby, it can handle it all. Uh, engine protection, great engine protection, and, and a lot of times I'll just I'll ride along and I'll just set my leg right on top of here because it's not on the head. I'll just set my, my leg on there as a, a stretching position. But I did buy some uh, used uh, highway pegs and these work great. I mean, I just, what a design. And they're certainly expensive. I got them for half price, but even half price is painful worth it in my opinion. I added the uh, inserts on the aftermarket pegs. These are the original inserts on your stock pegs and I just bought uh, another set so I had one for e each side double set. Take some of the vibration out and uh, this is my, where my accessories plug together. This is my battery tender and these accessories here uh, plug in here and uh, now I did it. Anyway, so they come up here into my mother load of accessory outputs, and I still got room to spare. Um, that takes care of all of this, this here. Um, I got my GPS here, and I got a GPS here. Let's see here what's going on. And what, what these two do is this gives me the street to street or my route. It's really easy to read on a big screen. I like that a lot. But this works great for uh, a bigger picture. I can zoom out really easy. And if I just plug this together real quick, you can get that lit up. So it's, uh, and this is my uh, red and blue light detector. Uh, that keeps me uh, more honest, more than not. And uh, let's see, my remote control for my GoPro. It's powered up through here. Here's the cord. This goes to a USB here. I can pull this off of the Velcro and I can walk around with it if I want. And what this does is this is my GoPro mount on my helmet. Uh, by the way, I went with a high visibility helmet instead of the high visibility jacket because I can take this helmet off and then walk around and go into restaurants or tour around some tourist spot with my jacket without a high visibility jacket. And I've had many comments that people can see this way down the road. So yeah, the idea is being seen. Uh, but my GoPro will uh, go in here and then I'll plug in my, my power in, this, in the side of the case. I drill a little hole out. And uh, that cord is this right here. That plugs in, comes around and goes behind my, my shoulder and into my, my camera. Uh, and then of course with the, the remote you can turn it on and off so you're not running a bunch of film footage You're just uh, recording where you want Really works great. It's a great system. This is an iPhone cord That I unsoldered the earbuds and then took out on a headset your stereo headset that you'd have in uh, your own home and uh, uh, Unsoldered those and then put those in my uh, my helmet on the side of the helmet. And so I unsoldered from the earbuds, soldered onto those speakers, and you really get great sound, like you're hearing in the uh, the garage right now. This is the microphone, so I can answer phone calls when I'm riding down the road with my helmet down. It's uh, it's surprising how people don't know that I'm actually on a motorcycle just talking to them. It's hands-free, so that works good. And that just plugs right into my phone here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, two finger uh, clutch. I cut the, the bar off. I like to be able to have two fingers on and, and then just do two, two fingers for a clutch. It's my preference. I use it for dirt biking as well. And then the piece here is what I uh, cut off and I mounted this on here as a guard against my horn. So that when the, you're in a parking lot and you come around and you're pushing against the bag, it's not hitting against the horn. and making yourself look like an idiot. 
especially with a 130 decibel horn. Let's see, Jesse Panniers, just fantastic the way these things unlatch and open and close. Tons of room, just tons of room. They're light, they're strong, uh, super easy to latch, lock. To me, they're worth the money. Uh, I put a little protection on here for a tip over. I found out when you tip over in the, in the driveway that it'll touch here and touch here. So it's a little protection for some scratches. Uh, I'll get to this in a second. So my uh, seat is uh, customized. I have this on here, by the way, as an anti-slip. It's just the stuff you throw in your, your tool chest or something to keep things from sliding around. And uh, that helps me from sliding around the seat so much. I took the seat cover off and uh, got my four and a half inch out, uh, grinder out and carved the, uh, the seat in little pockets for the pressure spots where my frame is on the seat. And I just sit in the garage for some lengths of time to find out where the hot spots were or the pressure points were and kind of carve out a little more foam. And now I got just this really super, super comfortable uh, seat now for, for my uh, structure. Different seat cover for the back. It's just something to get off of the internet. And uh, it's not perfect, but it uh, really is much more pliable for my wife. She's uh, pretty comfortable with that. Okay. Um, the uh, exhaust has been modified to be dropped. Normally it comes up at an angle like this, but it's been dropped down so the Jesse Panniers can get a full box in there in the Safari uh, option. These are the, the brake lights. Let's see if I can get those for a demonstration. Let's see. So you got your lights and then, yeah, you're going to be seen with those. I like them a lot. So that's, uh, that's a winner there. And uh, I think I've covered most of the items. Back to here. This is a custom uh, project I came up with. This goes to a Vulcan motorcycle accessory for your trunk box. Let's walk around here. I can navigate a little better. It's attached to a hinge. I just mounted the hinge, it's just a door hinge on the box. And a heavy duty Velcro I got at the hardware store. And it, it sits on here and attaches just perfectly. So that goes on doesn't come off if I go into a hotel or something for overnight I'll uh, I'll take this with me just pull this off and just take the backrest with me but I'm not worried about someone stealing it um, and then the way the trunk box works is I just lift this up so that I can lift the box up and I can get two full modular helmets in here it's the only box I could find uh, anywhere uh, for this kind of option and we can get two full modular helmets side by side in there. And what I'll do is normally, this latch normally has uh, just that pin on it. It comes down and the latch is on there. But I put this little piece of hose on here as a block so that I can just open and close the trunk easily the way I like to typically use it unless I'm gonna lock it. This is the base plate for the trunk box. Again, here's the stock base. And that's not normally uh, sufficient for doing much unless you have your own backrest on it. But I wanted a box. I really wanted a trunk box to put two helmets in so I could go have dinner and not worry about my helmet sitting outside. So I went down to the hardware store and uh, found a piece of half inch poly sheeting and uh, just cut it. Kind of figured out where the comfort was for the backrest according to the box. And then these are uh, all thread bars with barrel nuts and little thumb screws I guess you call them drill the hole through there and then I put heat shrink electrical heat shrink over it and it's very strong so that's my uh, base that I created for that um, and then when I'm normally going to work I don't carry this around with me unless I'm taking my wife for a spin on the bike or we're traveling somewhere uh, this is with me all the time. I just throw it underneath this bungee here and I'll, I'll just pull it out and then uh, cover the bike with it. And if it's sunny out, I like to keep things from becoming faded or I'll uh, certainly put it on there when it's raining out. 
So that's a convenient way. And I just leave it on there because the backrest fits kind of just like this. Um, heated gear. This is the uh, output for the heated gear. There's my controller right here. My wife's uh, gear. She plugs into here and she can put her controller right on here if she wants to not have it in her hands. She can just stick it on there with a piece of Velcro. Uh, she got heated uh, insert gloves and uh, liners, glove liners, and then her jacket. That works perfect for her. Uh, you just unzip this uh, here, and then this all slides off and get right to your gas can, gas tank there. What am I missing up here that I haven't mentioned? You got the padded grips. It's just weather stripping that is uh, real pliable. And I just use some electrical tape as the seams here. This is just the answer. Your grip's bigger. Your hands aren't getting fatigued by hanging on to a smaller grip. And, uh, and then you got the vibration absorption for these big bore bikes. Heated uh, grips, not a problem. Comes right on through here. There's no, no loss of heat at all. This little th throttle locker is comfortable for uh, typical driving. And then this here is your, your uh, you just, you're riding along and you can grab it with your pinky and, you, and you, you pull down and your throttle locks. That's how the cruise control works. Works slick. And let's see. Let's start this up so you can hear what it sounds like. Well, I'm probably missing something. Oh yeah, I thought of this. I added this on. They want a lot of money for a piece of plastic that's preformed, but I'll tell you what, it's worth it. This aftermarket, uh, I forget the brand name, I see it down there, uh, makes a huge difference to keeping all this clean. Since this is so visible, this, this really does the job. You can't say enough for it. It's, it's what you really need to get, the extra width, and the length, but especially the extra width, it really does a good job of keeping all this looking, looking as fresh as you can. Got the extra tape on here. Uh, side at night, these really light up. Now, if you're taking a picture of your motorcycle with a flash on, you'll see these reflect really well. Plus, it gives it an extra decor. It looks pretty good. Uh, I stuff like that I consider is kind of like putting earrings on the bike. It just gives it a little more of a uh, accessory look. Okay, well, that's the uh, the overall tour of the 2010 BMW R1200GS factory lowered option. And with the uh, accessories on there that I can just think of off the top of my head with doing a tour of it. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Gives you some ideas. Might mention that the Connie Attack uh, tires have uh if it's not the highest rating of a lot of tires that have been tested uh it's in the top three and uh they're very smooth especially just going straight down the highway there's no vibration at all but i will say as soon as you start putting it in the corner you can feel the vibration of these cuts so these are really actually doing their job whether you're in the gravel or you're on the highway or in the rain uh smooth as can be down the center but as soon as you start cornering they're biting and uh so i kind of like that for the the non-vibration down the normal uh, highway for some some distance driving instead of having that constant buzz all right guys or whoever's uh looking at considering a gs 1200 this is not the adventure model but it's uh pretty adventurous for me fire roads not a problem two up not a problem anymore with the comfort of the extra backrest and uh and for a daily commuter